Hello everybody, my name is Moises and today I will be showing you how to perform an SDS page analysis on fractions collected during HPLC purification of BiEye protein pellets. First, we are going to provide a little bit of background of what the procedure is going to be. Performing a sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or SDS page for short, is a crucial step in biochemical research. In this procedure, samples are given a uniform negative charge from the introduction of SDS. The samples are then exposed to an electrical current, causing them to migrate and separate based on their mass to charge ratio. This step is usually carried out in order to characterize whether the desired protein is present in any of your samples. Examples of its applications include checking to make sure protein has been overexpressed or verifying whether the desired protein has been successfully purified. Generally, this procedure serves as a quick characterization to ensure the desired protein is present for further processing or research. In this particular video, we are going to demonstrate how to properly set up and run a polyacrylamide gel using sodium desecyl sulfate buffer with several 30 microliter samples collected at different steps during the HPLC purification process of BiEye. This will allow us to determine where in the process our desired BiEye eye protein was eluded. After running the gel, this will then be stained and unstained to visualize the separation. To begin the procedure, you will need to take out your previously saved 30 microliter samples from each step of the purification process out of the freezer and begin thawing on ice. Each of these samples will be mixed with approximately 7 microliters of 5x loading dye. This dye contains SDS and beta mercaptal ethanol. The samples typically included are a crude sample after sonicating for purification, a clarified lysate sample taken after centrifugation, a sample of the flow through before running through the affinity column in the HPLC, and finally, a few samples taken during the purification process using the size exclusion column. During the addition of the 5x loading die, you will want to ensure that you are using a brand new pipette tip for each of the samples. This is to prevent contamination between samples. After mixing the components, the samples are heated at 95 degrees Celsius for approximately 5 minutes on a heating block. The next step is loading a gel onto the electrode chamber. First, one must remove the green tape at the bottom of the gel to allow the contents to flow through. The gel plate and the buffer stop plate are then placed into the chamber. Once in the chamber, the green clamps are then closed on either side to secure the gel. Either before or after filling the chambers with buffer, the comb of the gel must be removed. This will give us the space to allow us to pipette our samples onto the gel. Once placed, the inner chamber is filled with fresh 10% SDS buffer, and the outside of the chamber is also filled with running buffer which in this case is also 10% SDS buffer. Approximately 12 microliters of sample solution are loaded into their appropriate wells, and approximately 7 microliters of a molecular weight standard are loaded into a separate lane as well. The addition of the molecular weight standard allows for the characterization of size between proteins in each of the samples. Ultimately, this will allow us to identify our desired protein in each of the samples.
Once complete, the lid containing the electrode ends is placed onto the cell, ensuring that the positive and negative current ends match. The power supply is set to a voltage of 180 volts and allowed to run for approximately 45 to 60 minutes or until the molecular weight standard reaches the bottom on the gel. Once complete, the gel is then removed by cracking open the plate and placed into DI water for a quick rinse. After the DI rinse, the gel is placed in a Kumasi blue solution for staining for about one hour with light shaking. Once complete, the gel is then washed with de-staining solution for at least four hours before the gel is ready to be visualized. Once complete, your gel should look something like this, with at least one or two rows containing your desired protein on its own.